In 1970, a television program debuted that changed the way millions of people looked at faith. The Hour of Power. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Featuring the ministry of Robert Schuler, taught a generation that through God's love, your scars can be turned into stars. It was an idea that launched the most popular inspirational television program of its time. And today, the Hour of Power continues with a new voice for a new generation. When you put your trust in God, nothing can stop you. Pastor Bobby Schuler will encourage you and share a message that can give you a new perspective on life. Because whatever your circumstance or the obstacles you face, this moment can be your Hour of Power. Good morning, dear friends. Welcome to the Hour of Power, and thanks for your support to us. Our program is bilingual broadcast, other than original English. If your TV is equipped with nightcam facility, you can watch our power in Cantonese. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 14, you shall not commit adultery. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Today, Pastor Bobby Schiller talks about adultery. He shares with us that we are worthy of love and belonging. We are God's beloved children. Sometimes we may feel a sense of emptiness or loneliness in our hearts. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. And it is important for us to be deeply connected to the heart of God and connected in our relationship with spouse, friends, and colleagues. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23, Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands, as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. Pastor Baba Shuddha teaches us, if we want to connect deeply with people, first, we have to be vulnerable. Allow ourselves to be seen deeply. Share of the stuffs in our lives, no mask, no pretending. Take away our pride and fear, and humble ourselves and share our lives with those we care. Number two, make deposits into people. That is, to care more about the feeling of our loved one, to show them our love. Number three, do not resent our responsibility in every relationship. Spend more time with family. Number four, don't stonewalling. Be the first one to make phone call. Be the first to say sorry. Each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And welcome, church family. We love you. Thank you for coming this morning. You know, if you're not part of a church, join us at Shepherd's Grove. Belonging nourishes the soul. It doesn't matter your past. It doesn't matter how crazy or weird you feel. I feel crazy and weird most of the time. <laughs> no, you are worthy of love and belonging. Would you turn around and shake the hand of the person next to you and say, God loves you, and so do I. It's going to be a good day today, mainly because Ed Arnold is okay. So Ed Arnold's back in the house. And uh, thank you, Lord. 
probably one of my favorite people in the whole world. And uh, Ed had, a, if you don't know, Ed had, had a heart procedure a week ago. But up, he's up and at him, and he's going to be okay. So we're thankful to God and thankful for Ed. Well, let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for calling us to this place. And I thank you that no challenge is too big for you. Lord, you love us, and we've seen the miracles that you've done. And so in Jesus' name, I pray everyone hearing the sound of my voice would be touched with a word from you and with a miracle. Lord, we need it. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. be seated. In preparation for Bobby's message, the words of our Lord found in Exodus. You shall not commit adultery. Two are better than one, because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. You are worthy of love and belonging. The Lord has called us to connect deeply. Amen.
So today's a special day, and uh, it's special to hear Remco and Sarah because it's a little bit of like a little reunion thing. Uh, when we were in uh, Europe uh, last summer, uh, the Jacobsons and Hannah and I, and we brought Haven too, we, we toured Holland, and so they were there. And what makes it even more special is the Dutch now have come to the United States. So Jan, would you please come forward, and we'd like to welcome all our Dutch friends. Here and Chris Timms. Yeah, stand up. Yeah. And 
fantastic. Wow. You know, Bobby, why the Dutch are so happy to be here? You see, they're all tall people. We live about 30 feet. <laughs> yes, we live 30 feet below sea level. So that's why it's called lowlands or the Netherlands. And so we're always in fear of water. And it's wonderful to open the curtains in the morning, see the sunshine, and know we're on dry ground. But listen. <laughs> <laughs> but for us, in Proverbs 25, 25, it says, a good tiding from a far country is like a cup of cool water for a thirsty soul. Well, this church is to us a cup of cool water for our thirsty souls. Oh, and thank you, Bobby. Great, of course. We love yeah. the Dutch. We love you guys so much. Yes. And, and, and can I tell you, we, we, they all arrived from Amsterdam via Houston on Wednesday night, and they were all deadly tired. And then it all started. We came here, and Bobby and Hannah welcomed us. We had a wonderful time here in the church. And it did continue with, uh, we were at the rehearsals of our best friends, the Hour of Power Choir and Don Uwen. They are so terrific. And, uh, and we were rehearsing with the choir and then our friends from the orchestra. You know, they are terrific also. And then the welcoming of Russ and Hillary and, and, and Chad and Hannah. And these days were a big celebration. And now, after this service, you will depart to see the Grand Canyon, Zion, Bryce. But, you know, it's nothing compared to this church. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much, Jan. Yeah. And thank you. Chris Timms, will you also stand up? This is yes. the director of our Hour Power office in Holland. Appreciate all you do. And, you know, dear friends in church, we know your faces because every Sunday we, we see your faces on Dutch television. We televise the Hour of Power two hours every Sunday morning, 8 to 9, 9 to 10. And, you know, you mean so much to us. And the Hour of Power is so important in our country and in Europe, you know. It's probably hard to imagine for you that all those Dutch people and all those French people and German people and Swiss people and... English people are watching the Hour of Power on Sunday morning and are blessed for the rest of the week and can't wait till the next broadcast. And uh, Bobby, we have a surprise for you. Okay. As, as the Dutch, we have a small donation for the church oh. to help you uh, further the ministry, the great ministry of Shepherd's Grove and the Hour of Power. And Chris, will you come forward? Oh, <laughs> Terrific. Oh, thank you so much, guys. It's, uh, <laughs> well, thank you. Um, so we're very happy. In case you couldn't read this, it's $65,000 to uh, help the church. And uh, wow, said somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And, and you know, I've been with Dr. Schuler so many times in the Netherlands and with Arvella. And always Dr. Schuler would ask me if he would tour the Netherlands and say, Jan, can the congregation sing the song that my mother always played at the organ and Sunday afternoons? It's Psalm 42. As a deer that thirsts for water, so thirst my soul to you. And Dr. Schuler would stand in front of the churches where we had the meetings, and would cry all the time. Psalm 42 is a typical Dutch hymn from the Dutch Reformed tradition, 400 years old, written 3,000 years ago, but we sing it for 400 years. And as a tribute to the church, we want to sing it to you, Bobby, because we're so proud of you and of Hannah. And uh, we will sing it as a congregation of Holland to you, the church, and we are so thankful for your love, for your friendship, for your compassion, for your prayers, and for who you are, the best in the world. Okay, the Dutch will stand, and we will sing.
is how I know you're always near me. And when I pray in the mornings is when I know Lost, wandering alone, you came to pick me up and guide me. You touched my heart in a moment, and then I know you're always there. You who sends the lightning on. Remco. Remco, it's so great to have you here. And uh, you said something in the first so service that really touched my heart. And, uh, I and it was that this has really been, this is a big deal for you. Yeah, this really is a big deal for me. I'm watching Hour of Power for 16 years. I'm 34. So I watched it when I was uh, 18 for the first time. And I always thought I want to sing there. This is one of my biggest dreams to sing for you at Hour of Power. So today, this dream came true. Thank you. Appreciate you, Renko. So thank you, Jan, and thank you, Dutch, for, for your gift to, to our ministry. Remember, all our international ministries have their own bank accounts and their own boards. And so, they, so when people give to Holland, it stays in Holland. When people give to Canada, it stays in Canada, for example. And then those ministries can give towards us if they like. So that's why the gift. So thank you, Chris, and thank you, Jan, and thank you, Shane. We appreciate you guys.
Thank you for joining us today. If you're just tuning in, we're glad that you're watching. And if you're ever near Disneyland, if you're ever in Orange County or L.A., come to Shepherd's Grove. We want to meet you. We're a lot closer than you think. Friends, would you hold your hands out like this as a sign of receiving? We're going to say this together. I'm not what I do. I'm not what I have. I'm not what people say about me. I'm the beloved of God. It's who I am. No one can take it from me. I don't have to worry. I don't have to hurry. I can trust my friend Jesus and share his love with the world. Thanks. You can be seated. I want to begin this morning by telling you something that 50% of you don't believe and 50% of you do. And that is this. All of you, no matter who you are, I want you to know you are worthy of love and belonging. You are worthy of love and belonging. You are worthy of love and belonging. In spite of what you've done, in spite of what you have, in spite of all your flaws, warts and all, you are worthy of love and belonging. In spite of your regrets, in spite of your failures, in spite of your sin, you are worthy of love and belonging. If you hear anything I say today, I'll say it for a seventh time. You are worthy of love and belonging. And this is the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that you are not what you do, you're not what you have, and you're not what people say about you. You are a beloved child of God, you are loved by the most amazing person in the world. He loves you. And if he loves you, trust me, you're worth it. You are. Our world wants you to earn love and earn respect. And that's never going to go away. And earning is a good thing. But there, there comes a point where the most important thing in our lives, love. We need it from the moment we are born. We need love that to feel as though that that thing is so fragile, so easily lost, that we become the kind of people who put up masks and perform and act certain ways in order that we don't have to be outside or abandoned. And many of us, and many of you who are watching today, you don't understand how loved you are by me, by this church, and especially by God that many of us on the road of life, we have family members, we have friends, and we have people in our life that matter. But there are things about ourselves that we feel as though, well, we can't share with them because well, what if we lost them? Or what if they got angry? Or what if X, Y, and Z? And, and so very often what happens is in the rhythms of life, we may be married, we may have children or grandchildren or best friends, but in the midst of it all, we can still feel lonely. And maybe you feel lonely now. And today, I have an answer for that. And I'm going to tell you about it, so don't change the channel and don't leave your seat. Many of us often feel that we're in a crowd, and yet we're all alone. Many of us can feel like our whole lives are filled with people and with things to do, and yet we remain unfulfilled. We have means, but no meaning. And many of us live every day pretending that this abyss isn't there. And what you have in your heart, this emptiness, this loneliness, is a deep desire that all of us have, which is to be loved by someone in spite of all your flaws, to be accepted, to belong, to be valued, to be a part of a true family. And you are. You're part of my family, the family of God. And you belong, and you will never lose it. Let me tell you, as a spokesman for this family, you are loved, and you belong, and you are worth it. And that is a tremendously good thing. That is good, good news, the cure for whatever it is that ails you, for whatever abyss that you feel, whatever loneliness is in your heart, the cure for that is to be intimately connected to the heart of God and to other people. 
And that's not an either and or, you need both. And today I'm going to talk about the latter. What it means to be deeply connected in your relationships. In your love life, not only that, but with friends. And with your colleagues and with the people that you do life with. To have a deep abiding loyalty, friendship and connectivity and intimacy with the people you do life with. It is so important. It's the greatest need you have. That's why we talk about dignity all the time is because shame is the thing that gets in between that. But when you have dignity that's found in the kingdom of God, you're given an incredible courage to just take a risk and just go deep with people. And that's a good thing. So, Renee Brown, who's one of my faves, very popular right now. She gave a TED Talk. And, uh, and it went viral. It's the biggest TED Talk that's ever been, I think. And the reason is because she touched a nerve for, for everybody. And she did this research. She was originally a psychologist. And she's a research analyst, meaning that she says, if you can't measure it, it doesn't exist. And as a psychologist, she said, well, all psychologists, I'm not a psychologist, I'm a pastor. But she said, all psychologists sort of agree on one thing, that the deepest human need is to connect deeply with other people. And she said, I want to find out scientifically why some people can connect deeply with others and others cannot. So she began this long process. It was supposed to be a year or two. It went 16 years long, where she had thousands of interviews, tons of statistics, data, research. And what she found was this, that every single person essentially falls into one of two categories. And this makes all the difference on whether or not you can connect deeply with your friends and with your family. And it was just this one thing. Some people believed that they were worthy of love and belonging, and others did not. And at the core of it, if you believe that you are worthy of love and belonging, then you will do a much better job of connecting deeply with others than you would if you think you gotta earn it, if you think you're not good enough, if you think you're not smart enough. And so what I wanna to say to you is that is the hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That the shame you feel, the greatest barrier uh, between you being vulnerable and connecting deeply with others, that the hope of the gospel is this, that in spite of all that I have done, it died on the cross with Christ, and that I am loved as I am. That in my baptism, I received an adoption that can never be lost. That even now I belong to a family that will never abandon me. And you do. You belong. You belong to a family of God. And you are loved. And that will never be lost. You are worthy of love and belonging. Believe it. Believe it. It is true. Yes. That is the gospel and that is the great news. So often we think of heaven like, oh, that's the place I get to breathe underwater and fly and eat, you know, cake all day and not get fat, you know, like. Heaven, heaven is the ultimate result of belonging to God. Heaven is the source of all life in the universe. And heaven is the hope that when I die, I'll be more alive than I am now. That I will inherit fully my place with God and in his family. You see, isn't that great news? You're loved. And if you trust in God, you'll live forever with him. And that is such good, good news. Well, today we're talking about the, we're in the seventh commandment and the 10 commandments. And you may wonder why I'm talking about all this. And it's because today, who knows the seventh commandment? You want to guess? You shall not commit adultery. So it doesn't, you don't see it in the Bible, uh, but Mel, Mel Brooks told us this, that when Moses, <laughs> when Moses uh, came down to the, uh, from the mountain, the people asked him to go back and renegotiate. So he did. He went back up and, just, and talked to God about it. And he came back down from the mountain and he said to the people, all right, here's the, I got good news and bad news. The good news is I got him down to 10. Um, the bad news is adultery stays. So today, no? Too much, it's church. It's too much. 
You're right. So, today we're talking about you shall not commit adultery. And, uh, and uh, in, in all truth, there's a reason why in the greatest moral code ever written, that adultery was included. One is that I think that family is the greatest source of justice and goodness in any society. Having worked with homeless and having worked with gangs, I know that those are family problems that at their heart. And the way that you're treated by your parents is gonna have a big impact on the way that you live your life and on the decisions you make. And at the core of a family is your parents being married and that relationship that they have. So obviously adultery breaks that. But even deeper at, at the heart, I wonder if there could be a bigger emotional wound than somebody cheating on you, than your wife or your husband cheating on you. Uh, I, as a pastor, I've seen it often. I know that there are two sides to that story. And I know that it is still incredibly painful, incredibly messy. And I also know, by the way, that you can get through it if you really want to. That you can regain the hope that you had when you got married before all of that happened. And what I really want to say is that anyone who gets married, and not all of us are married, but anyone who gets married, weddings, I love doing weddings. I love them. And one of the reasons I love them is everybody is so joyful and hopeful, and everybody's rooting for this couple. And in our world that can't seem to be focused on anything or make a decision, there's two people that love each other so much that they say, I'm going to spend the rest of my life loving you only. So when adultery happens, and all the hope and all the expectations that were in what's the most important relationship in your life are broken, of course you feel terrible. Of course you're hurting, and of course you're broken. And at the heart of adultery is actually the need that we have in general to be loved and to love. And so what I want to talk about today is not just how to have a good marriage, but I want to talk about how to be good in your relationships in general, what, including the platonic ones. That with your friends, with your colleagues, how can we be the kind of people that not only have friends and have good friendships, but actually grow deeply and connect deeply with others? That's what I want to talk about today. So... First, I want to say this is the most important thing in your life. Can we just say that? Sometimes movies say this, but overall, the message we get from the world is the most important thing in your life is to leave a legacy or to be famous or to change the world. That is not the most important thing in your life. The most important thing in your life, and you'll believe me, if you don't believe it today, you'll believe it someday, is your relationships. Your marriage, your parents, your siblings, your kids, and your friends. These are the things that matter most in your life. And those of us who are hungering and thirsting for something, in the end, you will find it in a relationship with God or in a relationship with your friends. And I don't mean having friends. I mean being deeply connected with them, having just such an amazing friendship and loyalty that through thick and thin, you know. This person knows me, and I know them, and we stick together. I want to tell you, you can have that in your life. The number one reason people don't have this in their life is this, the need to succeed. And let me tell you, there is a need to succeed, and I hope you succeed, and I hope you do well in business or in ministry or in whatever it is that you do in your hobbies or in sports or in school. Whatever it is that you're doing, I want you to succeed. But let me tell you, succeeding alone is worse than failing with friends. One of the greatest, most fulfilling things you can do is succeed with people, with the people you love. That when you cross that finish line, you get there with your friends or with your family, and you hug each other and you know, we did this together because we hung through thick and thin. You succeeded as a team. That is the best way to win at anything. And being a pastor, I have seen enough people dying alone with lots of money. I do not want that for you. 
In the end, all your trophies and all your money and all the stuff that you have, those things matter, but they don't matter as much as having friends, loved ones, or family by your side through thick and thin. And a legacy, and the next generation that you know, you loved, you empowered, you supported, you launched. That's what matters in the end, I believe, with all my heart. And in order to do that, you've got to connect deeply with others, with the people that matter to you. And there may only be four or five or two or one of them, but to connect deeply with the people in your life. I think there are four ways that you can do this. Uh, oh, so I don't do this a lot, but I skipped a quote. And it's just so good. You want to hear it? It's this. If you want to travel fast, go alone. If you want to travel far, go with friends. It's an African proverb. Live by that and you'll do well in life. Uh, so, you don't have to be lonely. Congratulations. If you feel lonely, maybe you've got lots of friends, maybe you've got no friends, for whatever reason, you don't have to feel lonely all the time. You don't. Because you are worthy of love and belonging. And today, I'm going to give you four tools that you'll need to succeed in your relationships. These are things that I have seen as a pastor and in my own experience with my friends and my family. There are many tools that you can get, but these are the four things that I think most people need and the first is the most important, and it is this. If you want to connect deeply with people, which is your greatest need, you need that more than anything. If you want to connect deeply with people, you have to be vulnerable. To be vulnerable means to allow yourself to be seen deeply, deeply. That you allow people to see all the stuff in your life that you've been hiding, all your shame, all your fears, all your dreams, all your goals, all your desires, all your wants, all your needs, that you allow the people who are closest in your life to just see you as you are, no masks, no pretending. When you do that, you always think, I'm going to push people away, and sometimes you do, but most of the time, when you do that, people don't feel farther from you, they feel closer to you. They feel safer around you. They feel like, well, maybe I can tell them my stuff. And when vulnerability happens, there is a, a sharing of the soul that happens between friends or lovers or family members. There is this amazing experience that happens between people. It's one reason why small groups are so important, because this is a place where a group of friends decide to intentionally, for one hour, just be vulnerable. So, so if you want to connect deeply, I'm telling you, the only way to do it, the only way is to be vulnerable. If that's missing, the other three things I'm going to say are just not going to work. But the things that come in the way of vulnerability and connecting deeply with others are these. Pride and fear. Pride and fear are the two biggest things that get in the way of you connecting deeply with others. So that's what you want to ask. Am I being proud? Or am I afraid? Don't be afraid and humble yourself and share your life with others. If you want to connect deeply with others, number one, you've got to be vulnerable. And you are learning. You are brave. You are learning to, to know that your true identity is rooted in God's love and that you have nothing to prove to anyone. And you are learning to be vulnerable to the important people in your life. So number one, be vulnerable. Number two, make deposits into people. I learned this from Dr. Harley, and this is so true, and this is also true in leadership. Every single person you meet has, and I know this is so cheesy, this is very, a cheesy term, but it works. Everyone has a love bank. All right, You've got a love bank in your mind or in your heart, and as people do things for you that are meaningful to you, they essentially make deposits there. And the things that you do in the lives of other people you're making deposits and withdrawals. And if you have a relationship that's on the rocks, it's probably that you're, that love bank is empty or you're even in debt. And they might even tell you that. You owe me. <laughs> <laughs> Look, one of the most important things you can do as a leader or if you're a manager in your business or in your family is to think in terms of how have I deposited more than I've withdrawn. 
And trust me, you're going to make mistakes. It's going to be good to have a little savings account for that rainy day. You're going to need it. One of the things that people think about is like, well, I made all sorts of deposits. Well, no, you might have made deposits that would have been like you deposits. You know what I mean by that? The, the way everybody receives deposits in different ways. Everybody receives love in different ways. In a marriage relationship, the two most common things that men want are sex. Surprise, surprise. I know everyone's so shocked. <laughs> uh, good sex, by the way. And the second is actually recreational companionship. Guys want you to do fun stuff like, you know, go golfing, go to the movies, go to dinner, do, you know, go to a sports event. Statistically, these are the two greatest needs that men typically have in their marriage. For women, the two greatest needs that women have are one is just conversation, just talk, especially about important things or about the future. And number two, affection, holding hands, putting your arm around me, saying I'm pretty. So it is important that you think in terms of am I, am I, am I really depositing in this person's life? And that is what Jesus teaches us. The wisdom of Jesus Christ is that you serve your friends. That the purpose you're in relationship with others is to serve others. If everybody serves everybody, things are going to go a lot better. And that's usually what happens at the beginning of a marriage and the beginning of a fantastic relationship. There's love notes and there's hugging and there's kissing and there's gifts and there's time. And, and everybody's just serving everybody. And that's what's so important is you've got to make more deposits, good deposits, than you do withdraws with the people that matter in your life. All right? So number one, be vulnerable. Number two, make deposits into people. More deposits than, than you withdraw. And you are doing that. You're learning to serve others. And I'm proud of you. Number three, do not resent the responsibility that always comes in every relationship. When you have a new friend, you get new responsibilities. When you get married, you have new responsibilities. When you have kids, you have new responsibilities. When you take on a job, you have new responsibilities. When you get a dog or a cat, <laughs> look, I'm telling you, the more love you have in your life, the less freedom you have. It's like a formula. Freedom, freedom is the currency of love. The more love you have, the less freedom you have. And if you, if you want love in your life, if you want to have a relationship, if you want to have good, deep friends, it, look, love is spelled T-I-M-E. It takes time. You can't be friends with everybody. You can only be friends with some people. And if you want to have deep abiding relationships, you have to devote yourself to people and you have to understand that there is a responsibility, responsibility, and that certain people get more time than others. So like, I, Hannah was my first girl, serious girlfriend. I learned very quickly that, she, I, that there was some responsibility there. When I got married, there's some responsibility. I, I can't just go out whenever I feel like it. You know, I gotta talk to my wife about it. When I have kids, oh my gosh, just <laughs> responsibility through the roof. No time, no freedom, it's out the window. So this is what I'm telling you. I'm telling you now, you can either be free or you can have love. You can't have both, so choose. In other words, if you have love in your life, you have what everybody wants, you have it. Don't resent the fact that it means you have to be responsible. They have to be responsible to you too, you know. It's a give and take. And that responsibility in a way is a joy. In the end, as an old person, you'll look back and recognize that that responsibility made you a better person, it made you a deeper person, it made you a more joyful person. And that's a good thing. So number one, be vulnerable. Number two, make deposits more than withdrawals. Number three, having love means responsibility. You're not going to have freedom. And number four, be the first. Be the first. Be the first to make that phone call. Be the first to say you're sorry. Be the first to make a change in the relationship. Be the first to clean the house. <laughs> Look, everybody's got to clean the house, not just the girls, okay? Dudes, come on. Clean the house. Take turns. Clean the house. Be the first. And that is a big part of making deposits. Be the first. So, I think so many times what happens is when there's a conflict or when there's a change that needs to happen or something needs to happen, pride and fear get in the way and nobody does it. They say, I'll do it, but he has to go first or she has to go first. And then what happens 
It just usually gets buried. And it just starts doing all sorts of things to your heart and your mind and even your body. And that stuff builds up. And now you begin to re resent each other. And, you don't, and all these walls are going up. And you're wondering, what happened to us? Don't let it happen. Just be the first. Just suck it up and say you're sorry. I know the other person did something wrong too, and they'll apologize after you apologize. That's usually how it happens. Maybe not, but be the first to do those things. So number one, be vulnerable. Number two, make deposits, more deposits and withdrawals. Number three, love requires responsibility and devotion. And number four, be the first. And if you do these things, you're gonna do a lot better in your friendships, you're gonna do better leading, and you're gonna be a better husband, you're gonna be a better wife, you're gonna be a better parent, you're gonna be a better kid, to your parents. You do these things and you'll grow immensely. And you'll find a deep connection that you need with people. And it takes time. It takes forgiving. It never goes perfectly. There's always bumps in the road. But stay firm to these four things, uh, to this wisdom, and your life will be a lot better. Lord, thank you that you've called us to this place. And I pray for everybody who's here in this church and everyone who's watching on TV that feels lonely. It feels like they're unworthy of love and belonging or has had just a rough patch in marriage. Maybe somebody's going through a divorce right now and they feel alone or they feel shame. Lord, I just pray that you'd speak life over them. I speak life over you in Jesus' name. So Lord, thank you that you've, you've done this for us. It's only by grace that we're saved. And, and by grace we come and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join us again next week as Pastor Bobby Schuler brings you a message of hope on the Hour of Power. And Pastor Bobby would love to hear from you. Just write us. Until next week, remember to let your hopes, not your hurts, shape your future. Thanks for watching our power and your support to us. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 14, you shall not commit adultery. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Today, Pastor Bobby Schiller talks about adultery. He shares with us that we are worthy of love and belonging. We are God's beloved children. Sometimes we may feel a sense of emptiness or loneliness in our hearts. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. And it is important for us to be deeply connected to the heart of God and connected in our relationship with spouse, friends, and colleagues. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23, Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands, as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. Pastor Baba Shuddha teaches us, if we want to connect deeply with people, first, we have to be vulnerable. Allow ourselves to be seen deeply. Share of the stuffs in our lives, no mask, no pretending. Take away our pride and fear, and humble ourselves and share our lives with those we care. Number two, make deposits into people. That is, to care more about the feeling of our loved one, to show them our love. Number three, do not resent our responsibility in every relationship. Spend more time with family. Number four, don't stonewalling. Be the first one to make phone call. Be the first to say sorry. 
Each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Our party's motivational TV program is broadcast weekly on TV People channel. Every Saturday at 10 a.m. in the morning and every Sunday morning at 6 a.m. And you can also watch online simultaneously on www.ourofpower.org or my TV Super. Thanks for joining. God loves you and see you next week on TV Pearl.